Today I've got this Basler, Basler industrial camera. This is the A202K model. It's a one megapixel CCD and it came with this really nice lens. You can see all the nice aperture blades in it. This is a Fujinon lens. It is an F1.8 75 millimeter. That's a C-mount lens. So this lens is actually quite useful. More on that in a bit. But I'm just gonna remove that to make this a bit easier. So I'm not really sure if this is a standardized mount on the outside of this, but I know you can get this in a Nikon F mount. So I'm not sure if this actual outer mount is, is really a mount of some type. But this is an industrial camera, and industrial cameras are usually used for things like figuring out why a packaging machine is jamming. So you'd have a camera pointed at it and you'd watch its uh, movement and figure out why something went wrong. So there's some grub screws just holding this mount in. Unfortunately, I can't really use this camera for anything because of its interface. So let's just pops out and you can see there's even a gasket. So this is the C-mount adapter. They make a Nikon F-mount version of this, so presumably they attach a Nikon F-mount adapter. On the back there are two connectors, this one and this one. Good luck. It is a camera link, 10 or 8-bit interface, and power. So you can probably hook up power, that's not an issue, but the camera link, you've got to track down a unit I've seen them on eBay, they're ridiculously expensive. It is definitely not worth tracking down just for this thing. So it's kind of useless. I really just bought it for the lens. It, it just happened to come with the lens. <laughs> this whole thing was like $13 or something. So all solid metal, very nicely made. I've already taken out a few screws. There's just a single LED on the back. Everything else is controlled via software. The software seems to be quite robust and allows a lot of fine control over exposure and everything. It's a one megapixel camera with a 1004 by 1004 pixel sensor. It uses a standard CCD. So right away we can see mostly power related stuff. Oh, it's an FPGA. Well, try and get a better look at that once we get in here. But on the top it really looks like it's mostly just power supply rail stuff. Couple it's for clock generation. Okay, so I took out the front metal cover with a couple slot screws. There's some grease under there, which is kind of annoying. I wash my hands. And I can't get it out. Now, looking at the corners, I can see that the sensor I see is actually sitting on some metal. So this has to be socketed. And I'm sure it's gonna be ugly when I take this out, but uh, luckily we're not using it for anything, but I'm sure it's gonna fall. So let me see if I can wiggle out this board. Again, I am sure this is not the correct way to do this. I'm sure they use an IC puller and take this out. Maybe I can just carefully, carefully. Oh, oh, oh. oh there we go, that wasn't so bad. So this should just pop out, yep. You can tell that it's a very industrial camera by the fact that it has camera mount screws everywhere so that you can mount it in any which way you'd need in order to get your shot that you, you gotta do. And this looks like it's just a driver board. These are probably just CCD drivers. There's some nice German in there. I'm sure that just says that it's a electronic device, don't zap it, and it's a six layer board. Looks like it's just the buffering and stuff for the CCD along with some power supply stuff. You can see it actually uses a 15 volt rail. This whole unit is supplied by a 12 volt power supply under normal circumstances. Uh, wait a minute, this is 2007 and this one's 2001. This carrier board is a much older design than the actual processing board, which I guess makes sense. You're not gonna change too much on that heavy duty connector that's actually screwed into the motherboard with some Loctite. And even this one's a pretty hardcore connector. Well, it's actually not an FPGA, it's a PLD. It's the uh, Altera Flex EPF 10K. It's the 50 version, which is the 
highest capacity, one with uh, 50,000 gates, give or take. And like I said, there's pretty much just power and that little Atmel chip. That'll be the flash with the PLD software on it. And on the back, there's just a little Atmel AT Mega 8515. I don't think I've ever seen an 8515. Yeah, the 8515 is just an 8-bit microcontroller, just like what you'd find in, Ar in an Arduino. But uh, yeah, they're just using a slightly different model. I'm not sure what makes this one special. It doesn't look like it has anything special related to camera input, like a uh, decoder for camera link, that sort of thing. So it must all be handled inside the PLD. There's a couple support chips. These are probably, uh, that's probably a buffer or something to transmit the signal. And that's about it. There's not too much in this thing. It's mostly fancy software that, that runs this. You can do all sorts of motion analysis and stuff, but uh, yeah, I don't have any of that. To try and track down the controller and the wire and stuff is pointless because that'll usually come with another camera. So <laughs> there's just more cameras than there are controllers out there. Like I said, I mostly got this thing for the lens. So this is the sensor. It's made by On Semiconductor. It's just in a nice little gold package. It's uh, monochrome, I don't think I mentioned that. It's just a monochrome sensor that's uh, 1004 by 1004 pixels. And it's a CCD, not a CMOS sensor. And what's hilarious is Mouser is selling this for $718. Yeah, right, okay. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get that for it on eBay. Uh-huh. So they've got a little piece of glass glued on here. So it's got an infrared filter of some type on it. And that's about it. It's a uh, wide operating temperature, minus 50 Celsius to plus 70, and it can do up to 48 frames per second. So that's pretty impressive, but yeah, pretty useless, especially considering my smartphone does better stuff than that. It can do higher frame rate. It's questionable. This thing does have advantages in that it can do uh, global shutter and stuff like that. So on to the last part, which is the lens. This baby is really cool. It uses a standard C-mount, and it has tons of aperture blades, as you can see. Nice clicky aperture, although for video, it'd be nice if you could de-click it. I may disassemble this at one point because there's a bit of haze inside the lens, just a little bit, but not too much. Probably use a good internal cleaning. Other than that, it's in uh, decent shape. It's kind of beat up on the outside. So this is a standard C-mount lens, which is used on industrial cameras and security cameras and all that stuff. I use a Sony camera. So I just 3D printed this little adapter that screws onto this and it can adapt it to my Sony E-mount. It actually has no problem covering the entire size of the APS-C sensor that's inside this camera, which is really impressive because C-mount's a pretty small sensor. They're usually made for no more than one inch sensors. And the uh, APS-C sensor inside my camera is quite large compared to that. Pretty smooth focusing. It could probably use uh, cleaning and lubrication, but it does work decently well. And it's actually got a really great look to it. I shot this outside using my uh, Sony a6500 using this adapter. And this is at f1.8. You can see just the background blur on it just completely destroys the background, it's so cool. It's not super duper sharp, but you get the idea. And then we can stop down. You know, once you once you get stopped down fairly far, it starts to get, you know, massive depth of field and you start running into diffraction problems. But uh, a wide open, it looks really cool. I was using a neutral density filter for these shots because it was so bright out, but you get the idea. It's a pretty cool lens, and for the practically no money I paid for it, I am not going to complain.